everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Judith if you're new and this is Herbal Wondella Studio. And in today's video, we're gonna go over some basic candle making math. A few tools you're gonna need before we get started is a calculator, a good scale, your vessel, and some water. And also a phone because you're gonna to wanna to screenshot the formula that I'm gonna give you that you're, we're gonna be using today. But before we get started, give this video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe so that you're tuned in when we post new videos. Hey guys, jumping in this video really quickly to let you know to stay towards the end because I pulled my Instagram audience letting you guys know that I was gonna be filming a Q&A at the end of this video. So I asked you to send me all of your candle math questions, all of your candle business questions and I'll be answering those towards the end. So let's get back to the video. The first thing you're going to need to understand is how much wax can your vessel hold? And the best way to go about finding that out is filling your jar with water. Now, water is a lot less denser than wax, so it's going to be off by a couple of grams or ounces, but at least you're getting the idea of around how much it's going to weigh. What you're going to do next is get a scale. Now, make sure that your scale weighs to the hundredths. Now, we're going to be measuring our vessel by weight, whether that's grams or ounces, I like to use ounces, I've always used ounces. Whatever you feel comfortable with, make sure that you stay consistent in what you're using. The next thing you're gonna need is a very good scale. Make sure that your scale has the capability of tearing. And tearing, not tearing, but tearing off. And what that means is that you're able to place an item on top of your scale, press the tear button and have it measure zero. Now what that does is after you've placed your vessel on top of the scale, it is eliminating the weight of the scales. And what that allows you to do is actually measure the substance that's going inside of your vessel. So now what you're gonna do is grab your vessel, get your scale, turn it on, put the vessel on top of your scale, tear it off so that the scale now reads zero, and pour your water to the desired height of your vessel. Now, depending if your jar is gonna be using a lid, you might wanna leave some room on the top so that the lid can fit on top. Once you get the water filled to the perfect height, take a measure, take note of how much it weighs on the scale. Once you know how much it weighs, you have good measure of knowing it's going to weigh around that much. So now I'm gonna pop on the screen the formula that you're gonna be using to figure out how much wax you need to make for your jar. Let's pretend that we're gonna be making five 10 ounce jars. My jars were 10 ounces, so that I'm, that's the example that I'm gonna be using. So the formula that you're gonna be using is your ounces per container times the number of containers you're making equal out the ounces that you need. So in my situation, it would be 10 ounces times five jars equals 50 ounces. I need 50 ounces of wax. Next thing you need to consider is your fragrance load. What's your fragrance load that you're using throughout your recipe for your candle line? To figure out how much fragrance oil you should be calculating with, within your candle, let's just, for example, use 10% as a nice even number. So now that we know that I need 50 ounces of wax and I want to use 10% fragrance oil, the formula for this equation of finding out what your FO percentage would be, the ounces of wax times the percent of fragrance oil will equal your, your fragrance oil ounces. So now we need to take the 10% and turn it into a, decim a decimal. So the equation will now look like 50 ounces of wax times 0.10% equals five ounces of fragrance oil. So now you know for your 50 ounces of wax, you're gonna be putting five ounces of fragrance oil. So now I know you're thinking, well, now I have 55 ounces because if you put all the liquid together, you have 50 ounces plus the five ounces of fragrance oil is gonna give you 55. Now with that in mind, you can now reduce the amount of wax that you are melting down to 45 ounces because 45 times the 5% of fragrance oil is gonna give you your equal 50%. But if doing that scares you, then I understand you can go ahead and do the 55, but just know that you're gonna have a little bit of fragrance oil left. And there you have it, that's Candle Math Made Easy. It's always worked for me throughout my six years of candle making and I've never had an issue with that math. If there's something that you do that's a little bit easier or something different that you prefer better, leave it down in the comments. Let's have a conversation and talk about it. All right, so as promised, we are down to the Q&A portion of the video. I polled my Instagram followers. If you aren't following me on Instagram, go ahead and give me a follow right now. All right, so here are some of the questions that you guys asked. First question is, when is the best time to add the fragrance? Right before pouring or right after it gets melted? Thanks. So 
Every candle maker has their own technique of when they add fragrance. What really comes into play for that is especially what type of wax you're using. I know that with coconut wax, you can add your fragrance oil immediately after melting it. So it can be 180 degrees or 190, I believe. I've never actually played around with coconut wax. You can add your fragrance oil. That's what they say. But I've always worked with soy wax, 100% natural soy wax, not soy blended with coconut or soy blended with paraffin, just natural soy wax. And my technique has always been to add the fragrance oil once the wax reaches around 160 to 170 degrees. That's typically the norm. You wanna be able to give your fragrance oil enough time to blend and mix well with the wax. So you do wanna add it when the wax is a bit hotter, but not too hot. Okay, and the second question is, after the client has burnt the candle, how do the tops look? So by the question that she's asking me, I'm gonna assume that this person is using soy wax because soy wax is gonna give you the most issues with having smooth tops. And I can tell you this, if you're using 100% natural soy wax, after burning a candle for the first time, it's not gonna look as smoothly as it did when you first got it. There's gonna be some bumps, it's not gonna be a nice, pretty, attractive looking top, and that's okay. Especially if you're a new candle maker, you might feel a little bit embarrassed by having tops that look less than perfect. But the candle makers know that if you're dealing with natural wax, you're not gonna have smooth tops. Once they dry for the first time, it's gonna be bumpy. Sometimes it could be smooth. It's just the way natural soy wax. When you buy a big box brand of candle from a store and it says 100% soy and it's super smooth, and dry smooth, it's most likely because they've added additives to it or it's blended with something else. Um, I do know that in my short phase of playing around with soy coconut blends, um, that, that, that this type of wax does tend to cure on the more smoother side after burning. So yeah, don't expect to have your soy wax candle drying as smoothly as it did when you first cured it the first time. Um, next question, <laughs> someone asked your favorite vendors. And you can find my favorite vendors all in my wholesale supplier handbook. It's something that I've created. I spent six years building this book. Well, I didn't build it in six years. It took me less time to build it, but it's six years of all of my knowledge of suppliers, services, all in one handbook. And instead of spending hours researching and sitting in front of your computer, trying to find suppliers, if you're just starting out or you've been in business for years and you're looking for something different, you can find all the suppliers that I use, suppliers that I have found to be reputable and trusted. They're all within my handbook. And you can grab a copy now. It's linked below in my description box. Someone else asks, I wanna know all of it. Share all of your candle math knowledge and formulas, please. Heart emoji, love it. So if you watch this whole video right now, I hope you really did, because I gave you some formulas now that you guys can look at. I also have more formulas that you guys could be using within your business within my small business budget chart. It's going to help you create profitable retail and wholesale prices within your business. It can also help you figure out what your startup costs are within your business. If you are just starting your business, this is something fantastic. I wish I would have done this before starting and I probably wouldn't have spent as much money as I did in the beginning. This is gonna tell you exactly how much it's gonna cost you before you start up your business and spend, <laughs> uh-oh, and before you spend all your money on something that you actually don't need. Okay, so the next question is, I use coconut soy wax, some candles in a batch sweat, and some don't. Am I using too much fragrance oil? Usually if your candles are sweating, it is because you're using too much um, fragrance oil, but I'm assuming that this person is talking about one particular batch and some candles are sweating and some aren't. Um, it could just mean that, you're, that you do have too much fragrance oil within um, that batch, but those are sweating and the others aren't. I think I actually did have that happen to me once where I made a batch and I might've put too much fragrance oil or actually I use the same formula within all of my um, batches, but I think it was a special, I think it was like a fall collection. You know, those fall fragrances are a little bit denser and they're a little bit stronger. And I do remember some of the candles sweating and some weren't. There's was probably like one that wasn't sweating. I remember one particular fragrance that I was testing out. Um, but yeah, I think um, without me having too much context, context into the issue that this person is having, I'm gonna say, yeah, you probably were using too much fragrance oil. 
Okay guys, so we're gonna wrap up the Q&A portion here. I hope that you guys enjoyed that and enjoyed today's video. I'll catch you next week, bye. Thank you.